so I thought we would do a little get ready with me using some new products. I have a couple of new things that I picked up in the last few weeks and some things that I actually have from Barcelona, which if you watched my vlog, it should have gone up yesterday. Um, you'll know that I picked up some makeup bits from Essence that are not available in Canada at least. So I thought I would just do a video um, using some of these products. I've used most of these products at least once, but I've never actually talked about them. So I thought I would just do that now. My face is all set to go. I have done my skincare and I have SPF on, even though it's quite overcast right now and you don't really need SPF. I'm just gonna put a bit of lip balm on my lips. So this is the Abnomaly uh, Petro What Milk lip balm. <laughs> it's actually the lip and skin ointment and I showed this in my vlog. I picked it up probably mm, like two or three weeks ago now and it's interesting. Um, I like it. It's just different. So Abnomaly, if you're not familiar, is kind of a new brand from Desium and this is the only product that they have in their uh, Abnomaly range right now but they're four lip balms. And what's different about them is that they are petrolatum free. Most lip balms that you buy will typically have petroleum or like a petroleum derivative in them. And this doesn't have that. So it's a very different texture. It's actually kind of like an oily consistency. So it has a lot of slip to it. It is quite hydrating on the lips. It's made primarily out of squalane, I think. Anyway, I've been using this and I like it. It's like quite a different texture. Like I said, it definitely feels more like a lip oil. Um, but I'm liking it. Anyway, continuing on with the face, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter for Superstar Youth Glow. And this is in shade number five. And I really like the shade on me. Um, I could have gone probably with the four or the five. The four kind of gave my skin a little bit more of, like I said, like more of a opalescent kind of glow. This one definitely adds more of a warmth to my skin. I've been using this a lot of different ways. I will put it all over the face, just dot it all over. I actually have mixed it in with like a base, so foundation or tinted moisturizer. And then I've also used it on bare skin and then also over a base, like a foundation or tinted moisturizer. So it's quite a versatile product and I really did not think I was going to like it as much as I do, um, but it is quite nice on the skin. I really am not a huge fan of the packaging though because I just hate having to keep dipping this wand in to get product. I would prefer if it was in a pump because then I could just modulate the amount of product that I get instead of um, always kind of have to like dip into the jar, but it is a nice product. It blends really nicely. I have very combination skin at the moment, especially now that it's like officially summertime, um, but the warmer the weather gets, the more combo my skin gets. And I still really like it. I would not recommend it for someone who has oily skin and who wants like a mattified look because this is definitely not an oil control product. So for me, if I know I have an oily T-zone, I'll only put a little bit of the product on my T-zone um, and I'll also powder that area once I'm done my entire face because otherwise it will become like very oily and greasy throughout the day. But if it's set right, it actually just gives your skin like a really nice luminous finish, but it will not give you coverage. So it gives your skin a really nice glow, but it doesn't cover up your like blemishes or hyperpigmentation. If you want that, you gotta put a base over it. So the base we're using is also another new product. This is the Dior, I think it's called the Backstage Face and Body. The packaging is definitely reminiscent of the MAC Face and Body, which is probably the most iconic face and body out there. Um, but it's a similar packaging, it's also the similar amount of products. So this is actually 50 milliliters, so it's 1.6 fluid ounces. Typically your foundation um, comes with like an ounce of product, so this is an ounce. But this is actually a tad more product. And this was $50. Uh, this by the way was 55. I haven't seen this in store yet, so I was just basing my uh, shade choice on the swatches that was available online. I picked 3WO and it actually is a really nice uh, color match for me. So I'm, I wouldn't really classify my skin as an olive skin tone, but for some reason this works for me. I think it's because the shade range is so flexible. I would say this is definitely like a, a sheer to maybe like a medium coverage foundation depending on how you build it up. 
Um, so I think that's why the shades are a bit more flexible because it's not like a full, full coverage product. I actually just use my fingers to blend it in because it is a very fluid foundation. It's not tacky like the uh, MAC Face and Body, but I also don't find it to be as long wearing as the MAC Face and Body. Okay, this is one layer all over the face. It blends really nicely just with your fingers, but um, just to make sure that all the product is evenly distributed and there's like no crazy lines in the makeup. I basically just take a sponge, a dampened sponge, and gently kind of pounce it around. So I only do essentially like three drops of this and it gives my skin like a really nice sheer layer of coverage. If I wanted to cover anything extra up, I could do another layer, but I just don't find that this is, like I said, like a full coverage foundation that covers anything up really well. It just gives your skin kind of like a more even looking finish, but it's not a full coverage base. So I happen to really like that because I'm not a full coverage person. I don't mind, like I've probably mentioned before, if some of my blemishes kind of peek through. So I'm gonna use some concealer now. So I just picked this up. It is the Clay de Peau Concealer in the shade Almond. Now when I used this many years ago, I was matched to the shade Ochre, but that was before they added two new shades. So I believe they added the shade Honey and Almond. So I went to the counter to get matched because I most of the shades just kind of look so similar that I wasn't really sure which one to get. I really thought I would get matched to the shade Honey, but um, the sales associate insisted that I get this shade, which is Almond, because it's slightly warmer than Ochre and it's slightly lighter than my skin tone. Because I told her that I wasn't going to be using it for the face, just under the eyes. So she was adamant in me getting a shade lighter, which I actually don't really do anymore. Um, when I buy concealer, I just get concealer that is the correct shade for my face. I don't really go with the shade lighter under the eyes thing anymore. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just I stopped doing that a while ago. <laughs> so it's been a while since I went for a concealer this light. I just brought down the brightness a little bit so you can see a little bit more of a contrast between my skin and also this concealer. But once it actually is blended out, it does brighten and also obviously covers most of my dark circles. I do like the overall look and coverage and feel of this concealer. However, because it's kind of a drier formulation, so this is like very much a cream to powder kind of consistency, your under eyes have to be very hydrated and moisturized. If you do have dry patches under your eyes, this will cling to it and you will not be happy with the results. Okay, this is an Essence product I got in Barcelona and this is the 3D Dewy Look. Now, I really like this, but not for what I'm wearing, um, makeup because it is basically just like this clear um, gel formulation but if you apply it over top of a base it really just like picks up all of the product which is obviously no good um, you can always just kind of swish it on the back of your hand and use that to apply it but it doesn't really give the effect the dewy effect as well as if you're putting it over bare skin. I went to Shopper's Drug Mart and checked out the Essence products that we have and they do have one but it's like the holographic one. That one is definitely a little bit more of a statement. It shows up much more like shimmery and glittery on your skin. So if you do want like a really um, creamy shimmery highlight, you can go for that. This is definitely more of like a kind of like a dewy, glossy look. I've been really loving using cream products though. So for bronzer, I've been loving the Honey Wheat Bite Beauty Multi Stick. This is a very warm color, so it's perfect for like giving your skin like a really nice bronze look. Basically just kind of streak it all over, mainly kind of in my cheekbone area. Then I've been using the Face Shape Brush from Zoeva and just buffing that in. I'm going to do my eyes next. I'm just taking some eyeshadow primer. This is the eyeshadow primer from Milani. 
it's actually really nice and it is pretty long wearing. Um, it's $10, I think, at Walmart. I'm gonna use this Essence eyeshadow palette now. I have used this a couple of times already and I gotta say I'm not like a huge fan of it. Some shades apply really nicely, other shades do not. It's a very neutral, kind of warm palette, which is right up my alley. The pans are so flush with the rest of the component that it is, I don't know, it's just so weird. I don't actually think there are pans. I think the product is just kind of like baked in there, which is just odd. I'm using this um, number 15 Pro Shadow, Pro Small Shadow brush, I think, from Sephora, and actually really, really like this brush. I bought it um, during the Sephora VIB sale or the Sephora, Sephora Spring sale and I've been really enjoying it. It's like a really nice small brush and it's so versatile also. This is the basic eye look that I created. Um, so I just took that like kind of brownie red color all over the lid. I took some of this like bright kind of coppery color and put it on the inner corner kind of fading it out. And then I darkened the um, outer crease with a little bit of this like dark brown. So I like the shadows, they're not great. Um, some of these, like I said, apply better than others. It's not something that I would really recommend because I feel like at the drugstore there's probably a lot um, nicer drugstore palettes you can buy for maybe a couple dollars more than this. So it's not the worst palette I've ever tried, but it could be a little bit better. I'm gonna finish off the eyes with putting on some mascara and then a bit of the brow product. So I'm going to use the um, Super Curl from Essence. This is a mascara again I got in Barcelona. And I like this one because of the wand. I haven't tried this one yet, uh, so I don't know what the formulation is like. So I really like the Super Curl mascara because I like the wand on it. It's like the perfect curvature for the eye. Um, but it's definitely more of a lengthening mascara as opposed to like a volumizing mascara. I also just decided to top it off with a second layer of the Volume Hero mascara, which is a straight wand. But honestly, I don't really notice it to be too volumizing on the lash. Also, these formulas are very wet, so I can just even feel it. It hasn't quite dried on my lashes yet, so I kind of have to be a little bit careful. Now, another product I got um, from Essence is the Make Me Brow Eye Powder. Now, I'm not a huge eye powder kind of person. I actually haven't even really been filling my brows lately, um, but this is an interesting concept. I feel like there's a, a, a Maybelline product like this, but it just comes with this like weird little wand um, and some powder in the tube and you kind of have to be careful because if you pull out this wand very quickly uh, powder will go everywhere trust me it has happened and I don't know it's just like such a weird product um, it applies okay but I don't know I'm just not used to something like this I don't know how to kind of distribute the powder onto my brows I'm kind of just almost flicking the wand through my brows as if it was a gel, but I don't know if that's right. <laughs> Going to take some Essence Make Me Brow now. This is the gel mascara. Just kind of run it through. Okay, I'm going to put some blush on now. So I'm just going to mix some of the glossy cloud paints. So I'm taking Dusk and also Beam, which is the coral, and mixing that on the back of my hand. This is a Real Technique setting brush. I really like to use this for cream products. I feel like it's just the perfect shape. I use this for everything, actually. I use this for setting, under the eyes, I use it for cream products. I'm just going to take this highlighter from Becca, it's a Champagne Pop uh, Creme Poured Highlighter and I believe this has been discontinued which is an absolute bummer because it's actually a really lovely product. And I'm kind of sad that I didn't pick up a couple more in the shades that I wanted. I just have it in Champagne Pop. It's like, again, a really nice like, cream to powder um, formulation. It blends really nicely. Um, it lasts all day long and it just looks seamless into the skin. I'm just going to take my Urban Decay setting spray to spray my face down before I do lips. 
So this is my last new product. It's the Lancome L'Absolu Lacquer. And this, I have two shades in this, but the one I've been using recently is number 216. It's called Rose Story, I think. I got it at Sephora and it's a really beautiful color. It's kind of like a corally um, rose color, but I love the formulation of this. This reminds me of the Dior Fluid Sticks that has been discontinued now, and I've actually decluttered all of the ones that I have, but this reminds me of a better version of those Dior Fluid Sticks. It also reminds me a little bit of the YSL Glossy Stain, but it's definitely not as, I guess, long wearing, and it doesn't leave such a stark stain on the lips. This does leave a little bit of a color, but it's definitely not as pigmented on the lips. It doesn't leave as much of a pigmented stain on the lips as the YSL Glossy Stain. And then in relation to the Dior Fluid Sticks, it's definitely a, I guess a thinner formulation and it's definitely more comfortable to wear throughout the day. Okay, this is the finished look using some new products that I picked up the last few weeks. I just also realized that I have like a cut on my collarbone here. Don't know where that's from, but let's just pretend that that hasn't been there this whole time. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. There's probably going to be a couple of reviews coming based on some of the products that I picked up. Like I will be doing a full review on this because I've actually gotten a lot of questions on it on Instagram. But in the meantime, those are kind of like my first impressions on these products and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I wanted to give you guys a quick update before I end the video. It's about six hours later. I just finished having dinner. So the um, lip product is obviously long gone. Um, I usually just like wipe it off completely before I start eating so that I'm not actually ingesting the lip product. The face looks really great. Cheeks still look good. Uh, the only thing that I'm kind of um, disappointed in is the mascara. So you can, as you can see, uh, there's a bit of transfer under the eyes on both sides. Um, probably if I wipe that off, I won't get any transfer for the rest of the evening. It's pretty easy to wipe off as you can see, but the eyeshadow still looks pretty good. Um, it hasn't really creased too much, which I'm happy about. But yeah, that's just like a quick little update on the makeup. So again, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.